This is the brand new Apple Vision Pro. It's a mixed reality headset that allows you to fundamentally alter the world that you're living in by adding displays like timers over food that you're cooking or more monitors for extra productivity or spatial video to relive memories. In today's real day in life review, I'm gonna show you what it actually is like in my daily life, test out every important new feature and do my best to make it feel like you were the one wearing it. So the Vision Pro has 12 cameras and displays inside that have over 23 million pixels, which equates to about a 4K resolution for both of your eyes, meaning that it's very quick and it uses pass through video. So right now, even though I'm wearing this Vision Pro in the coffee shop, it actually semi feels like I'm not wearing anything. I can tell a little bit because the footage is grainy, but there's a very low latency. It's like 12 milliseconds, which means that it kind of feels like everything is happening in real time. I can see the video that we're recording. I can take a sip of my coffee and doing stuff at a coffee shop is one of my favorite activities. So I want to put to the test if I can use the Vision Pro here. And the two interaction points of the Vision Pro are your eyes and then your hands. So it uses your eyes to know where you're looking on the display. So what you look at, gets highlighted. So as I look at different applications, they'll become a little bit closer to the screen. They'll kind of like pop off the display a little bit so I know that it knows I'm looking at it. And then I can just go like this with my hand and pinch to open up an app. Now, when people first try out the Vision Pro, the tendency is to hold your hand up here because you almost feel like it, the Vision Pro needs to see your hand in order for it to work. But because there are 12 cameras, even just having your hand in your lap will still work to activate the click. Very cool. For scrolling, the motion is more like this or side to side and to zoom in on a picture, the motion is this. Now, I think the biggest learning curve is actually with your eyes being the cursor because there are times when you're using a display where you click on something, but you're not necessarily looking directly at it. For the Vision Pro to work, you have to be looking directly at it in order to interface with it. When you're viewing photos or videos that you've taken on the Vision Pro, it will actually dim the surrounding background around it so it almost feels like a movie theater experience. That feels very intuitive. And also the relational tracking is so good. So. Once it decides that this is the center of the display, then when I look here, it still stays in that same exact part of the frame. And if it, that ever gets out of whack for you, what you can do is hold down the digital crown and it will realign the center of the frame to wherever you're looking. That's a smart feature that just works really well. And then once you're looking at a window, you can actually make it bigger or smaller by looking in the lower right corner of the window. It will bring up an icon to shrink or expand the window. Works really well. And you can also move it further or closer away to you by looking at the bottom of it and then push it closer. So now it looks like it's right next to me versus further away, like in the street. And that works really well. So important to note that you can see your phone pass through, but when you hold it really close, it looks kind of out of focus because it's using the camera. So in order for it to like look sharp, it has to be a little bit further away than I would naturally hold it if I was not wearing the headset. So that's an example of the utility that you would get just using a Vision Pro by itself. You can actually elevate it a little bit if you have a MacBook Pro running Apple Silicon. So I could see this being perfect for in your office space potentially, or in a travel situation like this. We're currently at an Amtrak travel destination just to test it, not planning on training anywhere. And I've not used it yet. So as I'm showing it to you, I'm gonna be experiencing it for the first time. Okay, whoa, giant display just pulled up in front of me. And it almost looks like I have a full monitor now. And this immediately adds a ton of utility because you can use the MacBook Pro's trackpad and keyboard. Whereas if you don't do that, then the Vision Pro's built-in keyboard, the way you use it is one of three methods. The first one is by touching each key with your pointer fingers. It's not the fastest, most efficient way to type. The second one is actually by looking at each key with your eye and then just clicking it in. Some people prefer that. I think I prefer the pointer typing. And then the third one is actually, I think the best method and that's voice typing. By looking at the microphone icon, you can then just start speaking or you can pair it to a computer and then get your full trackpad experience. Okay. So that is what a productivity setup looks like with it. I think one of the other coolest features is this spatial video thing that I'm gonna show you. And in order to do it, we have to go to the top of New York City. So the Apple Vision Pro comes with two bands in the box. This is a single loop band. So when you put it over your head, you can then strap it in with this one button on the right side. And then you could also have the option of the dual loop band, which is nice because it distributes the weight on the top of your head as well, whereas this one is just the back. But I actually prefer this one just because it makes it easier to take it on and off. And I feel like also if I'm giving this to friends to try, it's a much easier setup process. Using this in a lift is a very interesting experience because it is having a little trouble with the lighting environment and the movement to know where to put everything in front of me. I'm seeing the message come up that says tracking failed. Um, it says make sure that there's nothing blocking the bottom of the Vision Pro and that your surroundings are well lit. 
And so that is something that I want to test in a future video, like going on a plane, how does it work? I will say that one of the things that I think is good is the latency. It's only a 12 millisecond latency, which is less than the blink of an eye. And so whilst the video feed is very grainy right now, it doesn't look like real life, the timing of it is still very real time. So I'm less likely to get like motion sick. When I use it for like 20 to 30 minutes, I definitely feel it like in terms of the motion sickness and all that light coming into my eye, I feel like I need a break, but um, definitely it's better than I thought it would be. How are you? Have you seen it yet? Is this the first? That's cool. the Apple thing, right? Yep. You know, that like way better than the... The Quest? Google. Yes, definitely. Great to meet you. People are noticing it now. I'm honestly surprised how little we get asked about it because it feels like a statement when you're wearing it out in public. Zach is saying that we're getting some looks as we go around, but it seems like most people, I don't know, maybe New Yorkers are just like chill and they don't question things. Also, worth noting that when you put it on for a second, there's like a moment of blackness, which is a little scary because it distorts, like you can't see anything for a second and then it fades into seeing your reality again. So I think that that is worth knowing. You wouldn't want to put this on in an environment where you're not like safe. Like for example, if you were moving, you'd want to be in an environment where you can have it be pitch black for a second before it brightens up. I'm just going to screen record what I'm seeing here so you can get the vibe. So right now I am looking at my photos app and I just recorded a immersive video here spatial video so if we go I can actually watch it back and it feels genuinely very real um, we're going to go up right now to the edge because I think that that's gonna be like the ultimate test because it almost makes it feel like you're reliving a memory like when it's playing it back because it has a 3d perception it feels like you're back there so the ultimate test is going to be the edge right now also, the battery for this is separate. It attaches by a cable here and it kind of locks into place, which I think is pretty smart actually, because otherwise if it fell off and then the screen immediately went black because it lost its power, that wouldn't be ideal. And then when I'm using it, I'm honestly just putting the battery bank in my back pocket and then putting on the headset from there. They could have done like what the Quest has done and put the battery bank in the back, but I actually like having it separate. And it also means that if you run out the two to four hour battery life, you can plug it in with the USB type C port and then keep going. So this is an example of an app that is not yet optimized for the Vision Pro, but while this runs Vision OS, which is Apple's new version of um, a operating system, they are also using iPhone and iPad apps. Like Vision OS is heavily based on iPad OS. And so when you're in here, this application is an iPad app that is just like scaled up for the Vision Pro and it actually works pretty well. Zach, it feels so weird. Like when I take off this, I then almost feel like there's a part of the world missing. Like having it on right now feels natural almost like it's elevating the experience which is a little scary how quickly I've gotten used to having it but being able to like be in the environment and then see when a text pops up it's pretty cool I will say so right now it's telling me to move back because I'm too close to an object and a couple times in the elevator it said tracking failed and then it kind of like timed itself out and so I think that that is worth knowing when you're using it if you move a lot, the Vision Pro can struggle a little bit with where to put objects, but honestly, the depth perception of where it puts objects is so good that like when it doesn't work is when you notice it more so than when it does work because it's working almost like 99% of the time thus far. I've only seen everything with the Vision Pro on and I've recorded everything. I'm now gonna stop the recording by actually hitting the capture button here. We just took a spatial video, which is a new feature that the Vision Pro has. The iPhone 15 Pro also can shoot spatial video. And spatial video basically allows you to get more depth than a normal video, which is like two dimensional. This is three dimensional. So there's an added layer of how close or far away things are, which then can almost make you feel like you're reliving the moment. I tried this in my briefing and was blown away. We're gonna rewatch this back at our next stop and see if it lives up to what it felt like in real life. Um, because I think that's kind of magic and amazing. Okay, it is now 5.38. We're having a very late lunch right now, and I'm going to review the footage from above to see if it feels like I'm back in the moment with spatial video. And opening up the Photos app right now. Wow, oh my gosh. This is one of the things that's really hard to show on camera if you're not actually there trying it out because there's a level of depth that it has where like it feels like that's my hand as I'm watching back this footage. Um, and obviously when it's just like a screen recording, it will be harder to tell that that's what's going on but this looks really real. The resolution is not obviously as high as real life, but it's still incredibly realistic, whoa. The other feature that I think is worth showing you is something called personas. 
So I'm gonna put it on and set it up right now. Get started, capture how you'll appear in Facebook and other calls. Hit get started. So this is um, basically going to take a picture of my face. So when I'm on FaceTimes, it can replicate me to the person because obviously while you're wearing the headset, you wouldn't be able to get a picture of your face. So right now it's having me set up my hands as like the initial perception. And now it's just to take off the headset and use the cameras to take a photo of myself. So that's my face right there. So it's saying that we need more lighting. Do you want to try your phone flashlight and see if that helps? Turn your head to the right. Capture's done. I'm going to Vision throw back on the headset. And it's using optical ID. It says creating persona. Mm -hmm. So creating the persona. So it's really interesting that there wasn't enough lighting because once you take this one persona, that's like it for you on FaceTime and things. So you really want, I guess, like look your best um, and also take it in the right environment. And then it captures all of your facial expressions. So when you're animated on a call, your FaceTime persona can look like how you would be animated. Whoa. Oh my God, it really looks like me. I'm seeing it right now and it's live as I'm saying things. Um, that's crazy. Okay, so it's saying to choose my lighting so I can do studio lighting, contour lighting. It kind of looks like a baby version of me. Like, this is what I looked like when I was a little kid. But now we gotta actually put it to the test and oh, try it. I can it. see your eyes now. Okay, so that is called eyesight mode. So basically, when you're in an environment, um, the Vision nice. Pro will show people your eyes so then they can see if you're like looking at them. But for example, let's say that I pull something up and I'm no longer like looking in the environment. Like, I'm gonna pull up Photos app and then it looks like I'm looking at you, right? Now there's eyes. There's eyes, and then if I open up an app, which means that I'm no longer engaged, it will turn blue to show you that I'm doing something. All right, I'm gonna head back to my apartment now to try cooking with the Vision Pro and then also watching a movie. We're really just doing all the real world tests today. I feel like the only way to see how good tech is or how impactful it's gonna be is to test it in the real world. That's like the mission for the channel, so those two activities are next up. I saw in Joanna Stern's video that she used the Vision Pro to make food, and I thought that was really interesting and could give a glimpse into the future of what augmented reality could be like. Like for example, putting timers over pans to keep track of what you're making. I'm 22 years old, so I spent almost my entire life surrounded by technology. Whether it be Spotify or YouTube videos or Google Docs in school, I took my first ever steps at a radio shack. And so I think that I just tend to be a little bit more optimistic and excited about tech than a lot of other people because I feel like it's added so much utility and excitement to my life. With the Vision Pro, the first time I ever put it on, I had those two feelings of fear, like being scared about it because we've seen so many dystopians like Ready Player One. And I think that there is a lot of potential for it to become a highly isolating experience that feels lonely and really takes people away from reality. But on the other side, I think there's an incredibly exciting opportunity here for it to revolutionize the way we interact with the world in positive ways, whether that be increasing our ability to get work done and making it more fun or enabling new experiences. Like for example, getting to visit a place that you otherwise would never be able to go. There's so much to be incredibly excited about here. And if it evolves in the same way that smartphones have over the last 15 years, we're in for it to fundamentally change our lives. And I'm mostly incredibly stoked about that.